Admiral's Log, February 22nd, 1925. It's been a whole year since my last entry. It has been so long because it's been a fairly uneventful year military-wise. Very shortly after sinking another British task force, they finally crumbled. There's been peace with the British for a year now. Other than the island of Cyprus, we got very little out of the deal. Some politicians decided that I was to be the scapegoat of this fairly lacluster peace deal. I was smeared in the press as an old war-hungry admiral without a future. A few weeks later, it turned out that it was these politicians that had no future. One night they went to bed and they woke up dead. Myself and my ally in the intelligence services have been influencing some other politicians in subtle or sometimes less subtle ways. They have now seen fit to make me Vice-Chancellor of Germany. Very wise of them. Von Clausewitz said, War is the continuation of policy with other means. He was wrong. We need to change our policy to continue the war. Now. As both head of the Navy and Vice-Chancellor, I was in a position to influence policy a lot more. So we quickly went to war with Italy. This means our new battleships will have a stage to show their might. Most of the Italian Navy seems to be hopelessly outdated, especially their battleships. I'm not sure what they've been up to, but upgrading their ships and researching new naval technologies isn't one of them. The Austro-Hungarians have already softened the Italians up a little. With a bit more pressure on their economy and their Regia Marina, we'll be able to eliminate them entirely. We have to be careful not to be too quick about it, as we haven't contributed that much to the war. We need to make our mark before peace negotiations inevitably begin. The best part of this war is that I will win whatever happens. If we get a bad peace deal, then I can blame it on the Chancellor and take his place. If I pressure the Italians so much that we get a great peace deal, then I can claim victory more for myself. I can show how instrumental the Navy was in the victory and remove the Chancellor because I'll be a war hero. It looks to be a very interesting year. Hey guys, still here and welcome back to episode 20. Big guns are about to go loud. Biggest guns, I should say. We have the battleship Ercol Vittorioso, Andrea Doria class battleship, displacing 29,370 tons. It's a cheap battleship. It's a crew that's received standard levels of training. She carries 12 15.5 inch guns. She's fairly slow at 23 and a half knots. And she's about to encounter her worst nightmare. She's about to encounter the Hessen. The Hessen is the first auto-class battleship that will see action in the Mediterranean. Or rather, rather, that will see action anywhere. The Hessen is the new auto-class, carrying 16.9-inch guns, which is not special because the other Nassau class, or the, the Baden class, also carry that. So I have a couple of these 16.9ers. I also have 16.9ers on the Pomeran class. There's also two of those. And then there's another one of the Kaiser II, which is an older Hagen class battleship with 15.9s. So this battleship is completely out of its depth. Also present, a lot of cruisers, light cruisers and destroyers. These are the new light cruisers armed with eight 7.9ers and a whole bunch of 3.9ers. And they're about to all face the enemy. This should be an interesting lineup, um, although it'll be over very quickly. I am considering having the whole fleet disengage, save for the Bismarck class, or the, the Otto class. Here it is. In all of its glory. Keep in mind, this is 1924. And I'm running a modern battleship. She's gorgeous. 16.9 inch guns, 8.9 inch secondaries, 4.9 inch secondaries. 30 knot speed, lots and lots and lots of armor, coincidence 5 rangefinder, semi-auto loading guns, electro-hydraulically operated turrets. This thing is a massive powerhouse. It's also expensive, 
and it carries a lot of crew. So, as much as I would like to send her out solo, I think it's not really in my best interest. Because if this thing gets damaged, I'm gonna have to send it all the way back and wait for it to be repaired. No, I think it's better to keep these things a bit more in reserve. We also have the Pomeran class. They are slightly less heavily armed, but also cheaper. They are 113 million investment, whereas the Hessen is 184. The ships are slightly slower. They carry six 16.9 inch guns as well as the six 8.9ers. And their armor scheme leaves them as a very survivable unit. The crews on these ships are relatively new, which is why their training level is still only trained instead of veteran. As for the rest, well, you pretty much know the rest. We got the Schleswig Holstein, which I have already featured uh, quite a few times. The Kaiser Wilhelm de Zwitter. Uh, ABC, or yeah, ABX turrets, 15.9ers. Uh, the Wurth, and that, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, 16.9ers, so same as the Pomeran. And then we have the Nassau ABC with the 8.9ers in secondary mode. As for the DDs, we got a lot of them. Um, arguably too many. I'm just going to push these guys out and find the enemy. Light cruisers Skuln and Seeadler new ships and i really quite like how they came out apparently they love to drift considering the turn that they're doing here and they have a turning circle of 499 which is not great currently though it looks like they have a lot less than that they seem to be drifting an awful lot and then we have heavy cruisers hertha uh, this is one of the new heavy cruisers as well she is a new ship, which has the 11.9ers as normal. But her turrets, otherwise uh, 5.9ers, are situated on a new cruiser hull and a new tower. The other cruisers... Limburg is an older design. Yeah, the other cruisers use this hull. Which is now obsolete, according to the game. So I got Hertha, Luzo, and Comet. All of these armed with the 11.9ers, and all of these unable to fire directly forward with their main armament. All of these eager to prove themselves in battle. Let's go find the enemy and see what the Hessen can do. Contact established with the enemy. Let's see what these guys are made of. What can the Hessen do? Well, a lot of damage. Sea state. Holy moly, that's a big debuff, minus 30. Secondary is going off with 13% accuracy. Main's only 6.5, keep in mind. Trained crew, these guys have yet to show what they can do and improve their skill so they can become more accurate. And of course, with this level of uh, stormy weather, it's going to be pretty difficult to get a good hit in. But I just love this massive gun platform. And I don't know how to get a good screenshot of it, because it's always going to be firing. The enemy has spotted the Comet and the Hessen. Alright. Eleven just launched her single torpedo. Now for the Italian warship. It's a Dreadnought-esque hull. Large guns, the 15.5s. Fairly old design, however. Um, superstructure is quite outdated. If you look at the secondary tower, that's not going to really give them a lot of buffs. If you look at um, the long-range tower and tech bonus... What are they currently shooting? Probably a battleship. It's 26 and a half when they're shooting at the Palmer. The Palmer is shooting back. They get a 21% long-range bonus. So, the long-range bonus currently favors this ship, and that might have to do with the range-finding system. I suspect it's a stereoscopic one. I spotted the Hertha as well. Hertha unable to shoot. Let's have the heavy cruiser just go broad. So, when they're going to be most useful. Essen building a firing solution, getting up to 9% accuracy. There she goes. And that was indeed the Hessen that delivered some serious damage. 1280. 
as well as 347 by a four deck partial pen and a main belt full pen. And immediately, two engines are out, the ship is flooding, the ship is burning. This is what happens when you don't get new ships. Or at least, it looks like the Italians, the Austro-Hungarians, the French, the British, they just haven't been doing their research. And that's fine. But that's going to mean that they really don't do very well. Here's the Hertha. It looks like a really weird craft. I mean, it is. The reason why I put the um, turrets so close together and then the funnel is that this gives them a very small citadel. And with that, it makes for armoring the ship a lot easier. Because your main belt is essentially just, I don't know, a third of the ship, as opposed to, let's say, 60 or 65% of the ship. Wow, they've been hit. But it blocked. That's what I mean. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see zero damage from this battle. Please get back in there. Hessen, please finish the job. No, it's the 8.9er that's doing some damage, but not that much. There we go. Ercole Vittorio. Sorry, Vittorioso. Turbines. Not even gear turbines. They have a hefty auxiliary engine. Electric steering. Krupp 2 armor? Oh my. Hull bottom, single. Reinforced bulkhead 2, anti-flood 2, not anti-flood 3, citadel 3? Oh, sweetie. They can't see me. Oh. I'm sorry. This is just... This is worse than fighting the British. Because the British at least generally return fire. This battleship is so old and so obsolete that it has zero chance to do anything. Yeah, I might have lost them temporarily. But I have seven eager destroyers which can easily reacquire the target. So this battleship might be in the clear for now. She won't be for very long. Besides, I still have lines on her. I can see exactly where she's going. Go on. Reacquire. Oh, now you can see the Hessen? Really? What I'm interested in is what sort of pen chance they have against the Hessen. How likely are they really to damage the Hessen? Go on. Where are you? There you are. No, not great. Not terrible. They can deal quite a bit of damage against the superstructure, of course. The Citadel of the Hessen is very well protected. 14-inch main belt. Which... <laughs> is still less than a heavy cruiser. Uh, the Comet has a 14-inch... Oh, sorry. I thought that had a 15-inch. that a 14-inch main belt? Hello? Did I forget about you? No, don't worry. We got him, nonetheless. Now, the Hessen is firing with ink, uh, standard, um, standard AP shells. So they're not that likely to bounce off. At least, that's the hope. And it seems that it's working. Because while there are some partial pens, I'm also seeing some very good damage. And this ship is starting to lose structural integrity. She's starting to flood. She is essentially done for. 34%, 33%. I've taken one hit. And it got bounced. I happened to be looking at the... What was it? It was the Hertha. She's the one that took the damage. But, well, that took the shot. And tanked the shot. Now, the Italian Navy has been taking some hits from the Austro-Hungarians, and the Austro-Hungarians have also apparently been very busy dealing damage to the Austro-Hungarian economy. Is I have done 
some months off screen because there wasn't that much happening. Although the French, uh, sorry, the Italian economy, well, there was quite a bit happening there, or rather not happening anymore. Because they just took a lot of losses. Oh, you're engaging the Köln now. That's uh, very aggressive there, my friend. Köln having done 149 damage, setting two fires. Chance to pen is 1.6%. That's your superstructure. Half an inch. Cones are fire starters. High capacity HE shells. Semi armor piercing. In case I go for armor piercing shells. Uh, they're mostly there with their small guns. To deal as much fire damage as possible. That's what they're here to do. Although I think at this point it doesn't really matter. Because this poor battleship is done for. See, in 1920... I imagine this thing was extremely dangerous. In 1924, it's been completely superseded by the Hessen. Maybe if this thing gets the jump on me somehow, it'll be able to do some damage. It just doesn't. Oh, these guns. This layout. Such a good ship. Come on. Finish the job. Flooding. Structural. Done. Okay, that was nice. They hit me once. They hit me once. And that was it. No further damage. No further questions, Your Honor. Um, zero damage. 2144 victory points. That should show the Italians. This is what the German Navy can do. Now, let me show you how the Italians are bleeding. They used to have an economy worth about 65 billion. It's now 23 billion. They lost two-thirds. They have a negative growth of 3.2% per year. Mine is growing by 9% per year. The British are making an awfully fast recovery as well. I'm sorry, this is the Austro-Hungarians. The British are, well, still, they're at 157 billion again. And they're getting more ships. And their crew pool is growing bigger. This is concerning. I'm still bleeding quite a bit when it comes to monthly because I'm getting quite a few new ships. Um, I fully expect to, after this encounter, this little skirmish with the Italians is over, to have to play against the Austro-Hungarians. And they have a pretty large uh, fleet. Seven battleships, seven battlecruisers, a whole bunch of small shit. We can deal with that too in good time. Now, we're getting some new big guns, but they're only marking uh, five nine-inchers. They're not that special. And I'm working on rangefinders to get my radar as quickly as possible. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I've been working on. Um, what? Where's the rest of the German fleet? Where are my ships? Hello? They're not in Valletta. They're not here. Although I can push these guys out. Both of them. Where the fuck is my fleet? Hello? Pomeran. The Pomeran's in the North Sea? What? Did you guys engage your warp drive and race home? What the hell? There's the Hessen. It's still the same month. The fuck? So you're telling me that this ship engaged warp drive and after the previous battle just vroom, instantly went home. I do not understand. Fine, we'll just have to send them out yet again. Now, we're going to send some task forces here. We're going to send some task forces here. We're going to send the Kronprinz. Let's see. Uh, there is still some older stuff that I have. Select on battleships. I still got the 36,000 ton ships. Um, yeah, here. The Kaiser and the Hagen. I'm going to decommission these because they are costing me 6 million. I'm not really adding that much anymore. 
So Kaiser, thank you for your service. You have done a lot of work for me in the past. Right now, you're just a little outdated and you're costing me a bit more than I would like. Okay, the Hagen's at sea in the North Sea. Over there, you. Just the Hagen, please, but I cannot move it because it already moved. Nothing here except for two BCs. The Friedrich and the Sachsen, they've both been refit. That's very nice. Oh, sorry, are they being refit? Ah, they're refitting. They're all refitting. They need one month to refit. That's it. All right. A mere one month later, unrest became uncontrollably high in the Italian Empire, and the government has been overthrown. All right. The Red Cross urges the Italian Empire and our nation to accept the exchange of prisoners. The government asks your opinion. That's a... That's a bunch of very expensive prisoners. To the tune of 136 million. We do not negotiate. <laughs> our government's... Holy... No. Our government is wise enough to decide what is best. And they want to give them 271 million? It's going to give me more naval prestige, but I already have 362 and I have no unrest. I don't mind an exchange, but only because I'm rich. Double hull. Okay. For sub submarines. Never mind, this is work in progress. So. Let's annoy the enemy some more. They still have 50 ships. 12 battle cruisers. That's a fairly serious threat. I need the Hagen to disengage from this group. Now my battle cruisers are also ready, so let's send the Friedrich der Grosse out and the Saxon. I'm gonna park you off the coast of Sicily. My new vacation home awaits. Let's see. Ah! Otto and Hildebrand, let's go. Down here. Sardinia also needs a bit more German presence. Off we go. Any more ships at home? Yeah, the Kronprinz. Let's go. I'll be up. I think that's about it. I still got a whole bunch in... in Kiel. How likely are the British to stab me in the back? Not very. So let's go. I'm going to make a Schwerpunkt over here on the left-hand side of Italy. A month later, the Italians have decided that they want to try it again. Vittorio Veneto, Lombardia and Insorioso is a destroyer with a bunch of 4.2-inch guns and a lot of torpedo tubes. Pretty quick, 33.9 knots. They just have one little weakness. They have few bulkheads. The light cruiser Lombardia, armed with 7.2-inch guns and a lot of torpedo tubes. These are a big threat. Vittorio Veneto is a class that we have already probably seen. They carry a lot of secondaries. They don't carry any torpedo tubes. Essentially, they're the least of my worries. Their worries are the Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse, the Otto-class battleship, as well as the Turingia, legendary Turingia, and a whole bunch of other escorts. Normally, I find myself outnumbered and outgunned. <laughs> well, maybe not outgunned. Now I have 13 ships versus the Italian 3. And again, they're fairly outdated. Now, the V10 is my scout. He's going to be working together with the rest of the DDs. And yeah, I'm going to organize all the heavy cruisers in one big group just to make it easier. Leaves me with one battleship. And the rest is escort. But this is all I need. I mean, look at her. Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse. 16.9ers. Yeah, I can look at this ship a lot. Okay. They're to the west. That means the Kaiser is going to start turning. Weather conditions are a lot better than previous. The DDs can start turning. I'm going to need the DDs to also start screening. I've been detected. It's no surprise with a target this big. 
just imagine that you're sailing around in a, I don't know, 15, 20,000 ton Italian heavy cruiser. And you go, holy mother of God, mamma mia, what is that? <laughs> That's the Germans. That's the Germans, my friend. Where? Here. You. DD. Torps, torps, torps. Glad I'm not fighting the Italians. Well, I mean, I am now, but so far I haven't really fought them. Stop blowing holes in our friendly, thank you. Because this is the torpedo spam group. Oh, be careful. You're supposed to be trained. Stop shooting up the friendly. I need either ID or elimination on this thing extremely quickly, and I need the Kaiser to start turning. Because I don't trust this thing not to already have torpedoes in the water. She's going to be dead, which is potentially even more concerning, because then I don't know what she's been up to. Oh dear. V7, tell me you got a good hydro. Yeah, hydro 2. It's not stellar. It'll do the job. It'll do the job of telling me whether there are torpedoes in the water. I'm going to run on the assumption that there are. And if they torp something, it's most of the time going to be the battleship. So let's slow you down. Well, I... No. Something else has detected torpedoes. The dead DD has detected torpedoes. 88%. Might be able to ID them before it completely disappears from the board. It launched. Unless they got blown up. Yeah, torpedo got detonated aboard the ship. So I don't think they launched at all. Uh, otherwise we would have seen it by now. All right. That's a smokescreen with an attitude. Heavies, let's go. They've lost sight of the battleship. That's interesting. Come on, Italians. Let's go. I can't let the Austro-Hungarians have all the glory. More importantly, I cannot have all the claims either. How the hell are these guys identifying or spotting my DD so fast? This heavy cruiser had a better idea of where my DD was than I knew of them. Are you running a low draft or something? What is this sorcery? Partial pen. You're firing AP, very good. Chance to hit 4.5%. Go on, get in there. Oh, 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 oh. Here. So there are light cruisers up ahead. They only detected the V7. They don't know of anything else. So these torpedoes are... I don't think they have the range to deal with the battleship. Cannot be too careful with these things. There's one exploding in the water. Jesus, this is going off to do something else. Over here, I don't like this swarm. Not one bit. I trust my ships to deal damage with this... Well, to deal with this threat. Yeah, it'll be fine. Hold. It's this fucker over here that I don't like. That's a pretty modern looking light cruiser you got there. Tons and tons of torpedo tubes. And a fairly dangerous secondary armament. What do you not have? Armor? Or speed? Potentially both. Shoot this. 
Dude, the heavy cruiser can essentially be ignored. Ow. Still got the torps going in every which way. Normally, you can just set your ship up to dodge and it'll be fine, but these torpedoes are always changing their course. This guy, never mind, can still be a threat. DDs, get back in here. Heavy cruisers, push in. I don't like that torpedo spamming light cruiser one bit. Holy moly. Holy moly, I don't like that one bit. I also don't like how I'm being detected and they're not. Whoa! What the fuck? What the? Look at this! That's not fucking funny, man. Be careful where you point those things. Whoa! There's more. Let me guess, you also got underwater side mounts, huh? I think they do. Everybody panic. Heavies. This one. This one. Shoot the light cruiser. V8 is dodging. I can take the V5 off of the auto dodge mode. That takes them all off of the auto dodge mode. That's not good. Dodge. How do you dodge this? Move. Okay, you're good. There's the Vittorio. There's the Lombardia. Holy shit, this thing is dangerous. Six inch main belt. 49 million? What the f... This thing is more expensive than their battleship. Must be a really new design. Also, if you look at the seven inch turret design, it kind of agrees, because this is a fairly new design. What the hell, dude? They're going to keep torp spamming me. I got a standard compliment. They can do this for quite a while. Hmm. Less than a percent chance to hit? Target fast speed, target size. Great, so you're small and extremely difficult to hit. Also due to your velocity. Well, that's nice, but I have a lot of guns. And I can't see your ass. Hmm. They got RDF. But so do my destroyers. They got a little bit less draft than normal displacement. These have 1% higher draft. 59.8% draft offset. Uh, weight offset. That's a lot. Blocked. What, you're blocking incoming shells from the heavy cruiser? <laughs> okay. Come on. That's still a thing? Huh. Don't care about the CA. Kill the CL. The light cruiser is the biggest threat. How expensive are you? <laughs> 13 million? This thing! <laughs> Holy shit! What is so expensive about this boat? Yeah. They got a Mark III torpedo launcher, a quad, for 785,000. And they got a, a few of those. That adds up quick. Torpedo propulsion. Fast, 21 inch. Okay. I really don't like this because it's getting reloaded. DDs. 
Run. Run, run, run. The Kaiser is getting closer so she can do more effective damage. Hopefully. We pen this? Meh. Fairly well. The torpedo launchers are locked on a destroyer. Could be useful. Bloody hell, dude. Shoot this. Boom. That was a good hit with the battleship's guns. Many bulkheads, spacious quarters. Oh! This light cruiser has a turboelectric drive. That explains a lot. Citadel 5. Okay. Cancel my whole rent on these guys having very outdated ships. This thing is, when it comes to propulsion, more advanced than my ships are. I don't have gear like turboelectric engines. Not even close. Yeah, you know what? Let's not turn the battleship broadside right in front of a light cruiser threat. High explosive. Yes, flood it. Because it is still trying to... No, actually, it's trying to kill the Turinja. How fast are these fish? 59 knots. Ooh. For the past couple of episodes, I've been fairly complacent when it comes to dealing with these battles, because they're generally not that big of a threat. This guy is something else. This is a new tier. Go on. Miss. Miss. If I can kite the Lombardius torpedoes away from the battleship with the uh, Turinja, I will do it. I don't care about your puny 8.1 inch guns. They just really don't interest me. The Lombardia... It is behind their friendly. That might... Might persuade them not to launch torpedoes. 3%? What the hell? Normally my ships are really accurate. Are you still range finding or something? What's the deal? Here we go, 100% chance to hit. Main tower destroyed, conning tower damaged. That's more like it. Yeah, look at that, we had a bug of some sort. Now we're looking at 95% chance to hit. Now the Lombardia is very quickly dying. I think she's stationary? Essentially is. Even the battleship goes, yep, we got him. 100% chance to hit. <clears throat> Perfect. Boom. 16.9 inch high explosive hit the funnel. Causing massive fires. Tons of damage. And still the threat of torpedoes. Oh dear. Kill it. Kill it. These heavy crews are a dime a dozen, but this thing scares me. This needs to go. That's more like it. Oh, they've already lost a ton of their crew. Well, it might be enough to kill them off. Yes, no? Done. Then the Veneto. Kaiser lost 1% of her structural integrity, but otherwise she's fine. Can we pen this? I'd like to think we can pen this. Boom. Yes, we can. That was 1200 damage. Give it up. So you're the most advanced foe so far. Interesting. Very interesting. 
And I believe that the Italians have quite a lot of them. Let me check. Oh, how rude. The Italians have 13 light cruisers. If they're all the same class, my life is going to be really quite interesting. Did you guys beam home again? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Even all the escorts, right? Everything went home. Here, we're going to send all of this to the Eastern Meds just to make sure that I have some presence there because I don't like losing transports. All right. All right. I have the blockade of Italy still in place. I have 12,000 victory points versus their 102. If this persists, they're going to go to peace very quickly. Which I kind of don't like. Economy 21 million, poor, poor sods. Oh well, so be it. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Thank you for watching. If you like my channel, then please support it by subscribing as well as pledging your support on Patreon. It would really mean a lot. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys soon for the next one.